This is the Lamborghini Chiron, the first production Lamborghini with electrification. There's been concepts, the Terzo Millenio and the Styrion, but this is actually real. You can actually buy one. At least you could. It's sold out, despite costing 2.5 million pounds. Now, if you haven't seen Chris Harris driving the wheels off this car on the Top Gear Telly show and you live in the UK, make sure you finish watching this video and then go to BBC iPlayer to watch that. You won't regret it. What we thought we'd do today is show you round it in a bit more detail, give you as much detail as we possibly can about this mad, mad car from the glamorous surroundings of a freezing cold car park in Milton Keynes. Now, the first thing I should mention is we're not likely to see another one of these around here today because Lamborghini is only building 63 versions of the Sean Coupe. There's gonna be 19 Sean Roadsters as well. And the significance of those numbers is a tribute to Ferruccio Lamborghini himself, the year that he founded this company, 1963, you see? In fact, there are tributes left, right and centre because the full name of this car is Sean FKP37. Sean means flash or lightning in Bolognese dialect. The FKP bit is a nod to late VW Group chairman Ferdinand Pieck and the 37 refers to 1937, the year that he was born. But that's quite enough looking backwards because this is the most forward-facing Lamborghini ever. It's also the fastest because under there you've got a tuned version of the Aventador SVJ's 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 producing 785 horsepower on its own. So that's already 15 horsepower more than you get with an SVJ. And then on top of that, you have 34 horsepower of electrical assistance, giving you a total of 819 horsepower, which is quite a lot. Performance is predictably biblical. So 0 to 62 in less than 2.8 seconds, top speed of around 220 miles an hour, which is knocking right on the door of proper hypercar performance, as it should be, because it's definitely hypercar money. But this isn't just any old hybrid system in there. It uses lithium ion supercapacitors instead of a normal lithium ion battery. And supercapacitors are interesting for several reasons, because for the same size and weight as a normal battery, it can't hold the same amount of energy, but what it has is much better power density. Now that's the speed at which it can release its energy. It can also charge up massively quickly as well. So basically every time you stand on the brakes, it recharges the supercapacitors to full. So every time you want to hop back on the throttle, the boost is there ready and waiting for you. And because of that, the whole system doesn't have to be big and bulky. This hybrid system, the motor, the supercapacitors weighs just 34 kilograms, which means just one kilogram for every horsepower added, which is excellent. Clearly, 34 horsepower isn't much. You can't do low speed parking maneuvers with the engine off, for example, which will disappoint your neighbors. But what it does do is improve throttle response and torque feels during gear changes. And that's the really important point here because the Aventador's slow single clutch gearbox has always been its Achilles heel. If this can erase the lurching sensation, then I'm all for it. You've also got four wheel steering, which makes navigating multi-story car parks that much easier. And when you're really on it, the EV assistant switches off above 81 miles an hour to let the V12 do its thing. Let's take a little look around the car, shall we? And the first thing to mention is every single panel is carbon fiber, as you'd expect for two and a half million pounds. The other thing is the color combination, this rather fetching green and gold combo, which is the same colors they used when we first saw the Sian at the 2019 Frankfurt Motor Show. Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Motor shows, eh? Remember them. Happy days. The headlights as well, nicked from the Terzo Millennio concept, interpreted, I'm sure Lamborghini would prefer to say. But also this face previews the next generation of Lamborghini models. So watch this space. The replacement for the Aventador could have a face that looks a little bit like this. The other inspiration behind the Sean Starling is the Countach. So they've sprinkled design cues, design nods to the Countach all over this car. There's loads of little Easter eggs and I'll point out the most obvious ones. The first is this bonnet indent here. And then above it, you've got this V-shaped cutout in front of the windscreen wipers. 
Come down the side of the car. Probably the most classic Countach Q. This one is this arrow shaped intake slap bang in the side profile. Special mention actually for these, not really a Countach reference, but these carbon fiber fins here. I'm sure they have a very important aerodynamic function, but really I think they're just here to look cool. And more goodness around the back. You've got this full width pop-up spoiler, incredibly deep as well. But the main event around here is these tail lights. More Countach references with the shape that surrounds them, but also the fact that there's triple tail lights. Someone has clearly spent a lot of time on the details with these. On a Countach, of course, they're squares. Here, they're more like squashed hexagons, but the effect is stunning. And there's a very cool piece of technology I want to show you here. These little four squares, well, they're actually cooling flaps. So lying down like this for maximum aero efficiency. But when the temperature underneath around the exhaust hits a certain point, there is a smart material system, although Lamborghini won't tell me what the smart material is underneath there. There's no electrics. There's just metal that deforms under heat, popping these flaps up and then when it cools down again, they go back down. Very cool indeed. Right, let's have a look inside. In here, there's quite a lot of familiar stuff from the Aventador, quite a lot of carryover switch gear, which you'd expect, but Lamborghini has pulled out the stops to try and differentiate this from the cooking V12 model, as you'd expect. They've got a justified charging two and a half million quid for this car. So, point out some of the things. The first is this air vent up here, 3D printed air vents. You'll notice a little 3D emblem in the middle there. Apparently you can have that personalized to whatever you want. Your family crest, a picture of your face. I don't know. The second is down here, the central screen. It's been flipped portrait like you get in the Huracan Evo and there's some quite cool features. So if you go into the menu, into the vehicle settings, you've got your Lamborghini hybrid super cap where you can keep your eye on how your super cap's doing. State of recharge, state of boost. I imagine both of those graphs are gonna be flying up and down at a rate of knots. Could be quite fun to watch that. Nought of 63, this car isn't actually of the main 63 car production run, it's a pre-production prototype. Familiar bank of switches and um, dials and physical knobs for your aircon, etc. down here. One button that's quite interesting, this activates the electrochromic roof above my head. So one click and it goes opaque, one click and it's see-through. We'll get a shot of that so you can have a see what I mean. Another toy to play with, basically. Down here, your three driving modes, Strada, Sport and Corsa, fairly self-explanatory, and your classic fighter jet style flip-up cover for the engine start button. They've also gone to town on the materials in here, trying to justify that cost. So you've got these amazing stitching right across the dash, loads of Alcantara, acres of this rather lovely cognac leather here, carbon fiber spokes on the steering wheel and everywhere else. I think they have achieved what they set out. It does feel very, very special in here for what is based around a car that's quite long in the tooth now. The Aventador is due for replacement, but it does feel suitably expensive in here. But yeah, that's probably enough of me waffling on, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna set off. I'm gonna put it in Corsa mode, and I'm gonna hit this button. Oh. It's my kind of hybrid. <laughs> 